Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. What is up, guys? Welcome back to Drinking Bros Sports Baseball Show. Uh, I am your host, Rob Fox, joined as always by Dan Holloway. And uh, we have a special guest today, a real deal baseball writer, one of the last in the world, as we were discussing. Uh, yeah, he's like an endangered species. I yeah. feel like we should be really careful around this guy. You know what I mean? Yes. Just like if you if you can't invade his space, like the uh, the red cockaded woodpecker at Fort Bragg, apparently it's like the most endangered bird of all time or some shit. There's signs everywhere like, don't mess with the birds, man. Like, fuck those birds. But this guy actually contributes to society. Yes. So protect him at all costs. I will not throw rocks at him. No, Jared Diamond. Yes. From the Wall Street Journal. You are doing a lot of good work these days. I've read a lot of your articles lately. Thank you. You know, if I need a bodyguard, I feel like I know where to go. You guys are looking out for the birds. You go look out for me, too. I really need some help. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, I'm armed all the time, too, so that helps. Yeah, no, it, Dan is actually an excellent bodyguard. I mean, if you are okay with your bodyguard being intoxicated, <laughs> it's he's a great bodyguard. I'm not sure how I feel about armed and intoxicated simultaneously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could do one or the other. We'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, there's a price for everything. Yeah, for sure. Um but yeah, so you're base. How long have you been at the Wall Street Journal as a baseball writer? I'm kind of impressed that the Wall Street Journal is that into baseball. Yeah, our readers love baseball. Mm. You could imagine who Wall Street Journal readers are. Right. Yeah, that's <laughs> very much the baseball demographic. I've been at the Wall Street Journal for ten years. Oh wow! I've been covering baseball. This is this is going to be my ninth season covering baseball for the Journal. So. I'm almost uh, I'm almost old enough to be considered a veteran at this point. Oh wow! Well, what's old enough to be considered a veteran? I feel like a decade is is enough. Ten years, ten years in the Baseball Writers Association gets you a Hall of Fame vote, mm. and then you're officially you know an, an old fart. So I was about I'm to say two, I'm two years away. I oh, was you googling go. you before this, and I was like, does he have a Hall of Fame vote? Because I just wanted to needle you on Hall of Fame voting for a while. But if you don't have it yet, then fortunately, I'm two years away from that, so all <laughs> complaints could go elsewhere. Dude. Yeah, you're not the one guy that voted against Jeter then? I am not. Good lord. Fortunately. Are you excited for that? Are you excited to get a Hall of Fame vote, or, or is that too much pressure for you? You know, the Wall Street Journal doesn't allow us to vote. So even when I qualify, I still won't actually be able to take advantage of my status as long as I'm working at the Journal. Uh, look, it is sort of a conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. It's not sort of a conflict of interest. It just obviously is. We are journalists who are voting for players who have enormous financial incentive for being able to write HOF next to their signatures. Uh, and it's always been this way, and the Baseball Writers Association has done a very good job historically, I think, generally speaking, of picking Hall of Famers. But I also understand why my paper and the New York Times and the Washington Post and some others say, like, that's not our place, so you're not allowed to vote. Well, I mean, that's a good point. I would, so who do you think should be voting for the Hall of Fame? That's always the question that gets asked. So it's I, not the right I've, it? I've always thought players should vote in other players, to be honest. I don't understand why, right? Like, what is it about being a baseball writer that qualifies you to, to decide whether or not somebody's the best or not? I think the idea is that writers are objective and you're not going theoretically objective. And you're <laughs> not going to end up <laughs> with people doing favors for one another. I mean, look, we see these committees, right? These veterans committees that do Hall of Fame voting. And that's how you end up with Harold Baines in the Hall of Fame right. because, you know, the White Sox owner was friends with him and hired had him on the team for a long time and sort of was able to shove him through this small committee. Probably the best way, if not the writers, is some group of different people, right? Maybe players have some role and broadcasters maybe have some role and maybe writers have some role. Mm. I, I don't know how, I don't really know if there's a better way. There's no other sport though that does it the way baseball does, right? In the NFL, they just sort of, some guys get into a room and come out and say, all right, who's this is in the Hall of Fame now. Mm -hmm. So uh, look, I, I don't know if there's a better way, but I also, I also understand how as a journalist, you would feel like this is not my place or I can't do this subjectively and still do my job covering baseball. Also, side note, I'm not saying I really am going to complain about not having to deal with my Twitter mentions, what they would probably be like after I posted my Hall of Fame ballot. Because yeah, you, you may have to go full Chrissy Teigen and just dang. delete the whole thing, right? I mean, it, it's pretty insane how 
how angry people get about it. On the one hand, it's great because I cover baseball and I want people to be passionate about baseball. And it's kind of great how much people care about which players get a little plaque in right. a room in upstate New York. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't really matter at all. I guess it matters to the players, but as a fan, it doesn't really matter. So I do like that people get so riled up about it. But I'm not sure, you know, death threats uh, to writers yeah. who vote for Omar Vizquel. Is, are yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're willing to murder for Omar Vizquel, then well, you're, I, I mean, probably I, your bar for murder is low. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a bit of a stretch, right? I mean, he was good at going into the hole and throwing over the top of his body. Yeah. But look, Jeter did it better than him. So yeah. whatever. Uh, yeah, I, I like the uh, I don't like the aggressiveness, but I do like the passion. I guess if the, if you can separate the two, because it is. It's one of the things that's that seems to be lost in baseball that's pervasive in other sports. People don't seem to be and it, look, it's because there's people aren't hitting uh, 80 home runs a year now. That's really what it is. I don't know. I'm not going to get you involved in this debate, but I am pro PEDs big time. <laughs> I love that shit. That was the most exciting time in baseball history when Sosa McGuire were chasing stuff, when Barry Bond, when nobody when Buck Showalter walked Barry Bonds with the goddamn bases loaded. That's one of the most, uh, uh, an intentional walk is one of the most exciting things I've ever seen in my life. I'm like, holy shit, I'm witnessing true greatness because they won't even pitch to him with the bases loaded. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what the fuck? Um, so you uh, want to put PEDs like in the pregame meals without telling them? Just No, no. I mean, I brush off some steroids and consent go is, get them. Uh, consent is important, I'm told. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think, uh, I, I think they should just be allowed to do what they want. I mean, in every other facet of life, we can... If there was some pill like alpha brain or whatever the fuck that Joe Rogan sells that makes your brain work better and you use it for your job, people aren't people don't come and criticize you like, oh, you're fucking you're cheating, man. Like, no, you're just trying to get the best out of yourself. Yeah. Well, it's, that's the thing with uh, uh, I remember it was like with Adam LaRoche back yeah. in the day about him being on Adderall. Like there's players with ADD. Yeah. where right. where they can't but then like yeah Aubrey Huff took Adderall a lot too. Yeah, yeah. a lot was, of guys. Was that with, Maybe it's all first baseman. I don't know. Yeah, they just <laughs> It feels like a bad place to have ADD. Yeah, I mean, look, if the pitcher's throwing over, especially you have some knucklehead over there throwing the ball over to you all the time. I, I don't know, man. I, I, it's, I, just, I think baseball's got a problem with the way they market their product, um, with the speeding the game up. Like, if you've got a product and you feel like it's not good enough, and that's what they're saying, uh, then making less of the product doesn't seem like the solution to me. Making the product more exciting seems like the solution. Yeah, it's, it's funny. It, it, you really saw the marketing issues and sort of the problems, I think, with some of the people that are running baseball the last couple of years where yeah. during the pandemic and then again this winter, you had baseball owners and officials actively pushing for there to be fewer games in the season yeah. because they didn't want to pay the players for more. Yeah. And look, I understand the economic issues of trying to play baseball with no fans. I'm not trying to downplay them. Uh, but maybe maybe as a as major league baseball, you should not be out there going, what we need is fewer baseball games. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's go get them. Not exactly like the right message for your product. And um, look, baseball does have problems. There are fundamental issues with the product that is on the field mm -hmm. right now and how the game is played. And we could literally spend many hours discussing how we got here and, and how maybe we're going to fix it. And they're all totally legitimate, many of these concerns. But you constantly have Major League Baseball going out there and talking about all of these problems mm. and how baseball is messed up and needs to be fixed. Like, I, I understand that you do need to solve some of these issues, but maybe instead of making that sort of the crux of what you're saying publicly, spend more time talking about what's good about your right. game. And what's good about your game is you have this collection of like young superstar talented players like we haven't seen you know since yeah. the, probably the early to mid 90s and very diverse too i mean you've got tatis jr who grew up here in america you've got people like acuna who grew up overseas you've got i mean this is like the whole gamut of types of people and types of personalities that are great baseball players like mike soroka quiet dude yeah. right gonna be a legit star you know yeah i mean it's there's so much good to talk about i agree with you there i think they're focusing way too much on the negative shit and you, even from a diversity standpoint, yeah. right? Base, there, look, there's a problem with black American participation in baseball yeah. compared to what it was. And right? what was we that program, that, the RBI program that they started back yeah. in the late 90s? Yeah, I they're think. making inroads to try to solve it. Yeah. But the reality is only 8% of Major League Baseball is black. Right. It had been, you know, 
tw- a quarter or 20% mm. in the 70s and 80s. Yeah. But here's where baseball thrives, right? A third of the players are, are Latin American. Mm. You have players from Japan and Korea Tons and Taiwan. Of Asians, yeah. Baseball is about as diverse of a sport as there is in the United States. That's probably and yet, what true, do you right? always hear about baseball? That it's it's all white. Yeah, yeah. Just totally but that's untrue. That's completely untrue. At least half the league is is non-white. I would say at and, this point. And it really is uh, like if you want to get like super into semantics, like there's the African Americans are down, but there's plenty of like black faces. Yeah, yeah. Baseball. There's a lot you of a I mean? lot of Dominican dudes. Absolutely. And, yeah, yeah, of yeah. Dominican, yeah, yeah. Venezuela, yeah, yeah, for sure. All throughout Latin America, they love baseball. All throughout Asia, they love baseball. And that's important too, from a from an economic standpoint, because. You know what? One of the big boons in the NBA is when people like Steph Curry, for example, started making those trips over to China. He, for for a good from like 2014 to 2018, there was no bigger sports star in Asia than Steph Curry, right? I mean, he was a god over there, and it's still like that to some degree. But I don't think baseball has done enough. I think they should have bought the Korean Baseball League, to be honest, and fully funded that shit and, and jacked it up and, and used it for something like a farm system. There's so many like the what the NBA has done with the G League. There's so yeah. many different ways that they could have handled this situation. And to be honest, there's been no consistency out of the commissioner's office. Manfred, for the last couple of years, vehemently denies the ball's juiced or whatever. And then this year, uh, immediately comes out of the gate and says, yeah, we're going to deaden the ball this year and blah, blah, blah. Like, well, what do you mean deaden it? If it wasn't juiced in the first place, what the fuck are you talking about, man? You know what I mean? So it's, I don't know. I don't think he's a bad commissioner, though. He's, I mean, he's not Roger Goodell. Goodell is a terrible commissioner. Manfred's doing a pretty good job, but some, the inconsistency is not very good. Yeah, the pro- this isn't really a problem with Rob Manfred because Rob Manfred is objectively very good at his mm-hmm. job. I agree. The problem is his job and like what it is, right? We think of commissioners of all sports. We want to believe that their responsibility is to represent sort of the game mm. at large, but it's really not. They work for the owners. The owners hire them. The owners could fire them. Right. It's essentially their job to represent the interests of the owners and Rob Manford does that job incredibly well. The owners have made absurd amount of money during Rob Manford's tenure. But I think fans often feel like, hey, well, if you're looking out for the owners and the players association are looking out for the players, who's looking out for us? The fans, who's yeah, exactly. Who's looking out for baseball with a capital B hmm. to ensure that the game is getting better? And the reality is nobody, <laughs> like there is no one who's primary responsibility is making sure that baseball as a product is moving in the in the right direction like look they hired theo epstein to work in the commissioner's office and his job is sort of improve the product on the field so it's not like they're not trying but i think we expect a lot out of rob manfred on these issues like hey mm. he's answering to 30 billionaires yeah for they're sure, yeah. ultimately making the decisions i think uh yeah we've had, goodell's been one of the worst examples of of a commissioner, and, and as far as I've been alive, to be honest, but I think Manfred's done a good job. I think uh, Sterling's done a good job. Or not Sterling, what the fuck? Why did I say that? Uh, uh, Silver, Adam uh, Silver. Silver, yeah. Adam Sterling, Silver. Sterling, 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 Silver. Sterling has not done a good job. <laughs> <laughs> if, uh, unless you consider yelling the N-word a good job. Yeah, right. I, I, we, we don't, obviously. Still alive, still a billionaire. Yeah, and I, I think... Saw him on the Forbes list the but, other day. Yeah, for sure. It, it, ultimately, though, it does fall on Manfred's shoulders because he's the essentially the CEO of baseball uh, with a capital B. So... You know, it seems like what you were saying before with the trying to trying to lessen the product and thus lessen the impact of a of a of a weaker product is not it, that never works. That's what that's the auto industry in the mid 2000s. Right. That's exactly what happened. They started making shittier products uh, and uh, 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 started putting less into the, the deal because their margins got lower. And you saw it happen. Their entire industry collapsed. And God forbid that happened to Major League Baseball. That would right. be a fucking travesty if that happened. I'm getting, yeah. I'm getting whiffs. I, I want your, I want to like hear what you think about this. I'm starting to get whiffs of them trying to improve the product in terms of an on-field uh, play, like it just changing the, the style of play. With and we've talked about this before with mm. some of the new minor league rules and stuff like that. It's, some of that stuff is pretty interesting. Yeah. It, it seems like they're tr- they're kind of tinkering with g- getting more running and speed in the game or back into the game uh, with stuff like, you know, limiting shifting, obviously, is, is one that gets people on base. Larger bases, it would presumably encourage running, make runners safe more often. Um, it's, uh, there's, like, there's a pitch timer or something. I mean, it, just, it seems like they want to encourage... Uh, running and like speed first to third kind of 2014 2015 royals baseball 
Yeah, they want feats of athleticism back. They yeah. want action. What they don't want is six minutes in between balls and play, right? We're in this world now where baseball games are extremely long, and but not only are they long, they, they largely consist of the pitcher and catcher playing a game of catch. Mm. And then every once in a while, it's interrupted by a home run. And in between, it's sort of just nothing's happening. It's tons of strikeouts, a uh, bunch of walks. Not The ball's not being put in play. You're not seeing much action during the game. And absolutely, baseball is trying to inspire more. Uh, and again, there's so many reasons why this has happened. Some of them are going to be very, very hard to solve. Others might be a little easier to solve. But one problem that baseball's always had, especially compared to the other sports, is a total reluctance to sort of open up the hood and tinker and right. make changes to like some how the game works. And no other sport has this problem, right? The NFL is like, hey, there's too many pass interference calls, so we're just going to have fewer of them now. The <laughs> NBA is like, oh, people don't like when the refs calling little ticky tack fouls yeah. on the outside. So we're going to stop calling them or whatever. Like they just make changes. But whenever baseball tries to make changes, you have this whole set of, you know, purists, like older fans. Yeah, yeah. Baseball's a much older sport, majorly based on going on. Wall forever. Street Journal readers. You have this, <laughs> large, this large group of fans who get furious about every little change. Oh, yeah. It's, it's crazy. And, it, and they don't, they struggle to figure out, like, okay, what can we do that's not going to alienate our core audience, but also bring in new people? Remember a few years ago? When they said, okay, from now on, we're going to limit mound visits. Like you only mm. go to the mound five times a game, whatever they said. Right. They announced that in spring training. That literally sparked like three weeks of ferocious debate <laughs> about how this was going to ruin baseball. And then the season started, and no one ever talked about it again because it was fine. It was just totally fine. Yeah, who gives a shit about mound visits? Right. It, yeah. and like especially who cares about most of these things that people get right, so loud yeah. about? It's, it's, especially in the regular season where even the most diehard fan would want to murder Terry mm-hmm. Francona if for example if they were an Indians fan if he was going out to yeah. the mound 10 times a game. Well, remember what before Bobby Cox pre-knee surgery that <laughs> that fucking stroll out to the mound like Jesus Christ dude somebody <laughs> get him a rascal scooter and get his ass out there because I can't take any more of this shit. If it were me, I would get rid of all the mound visits. Screw that. Why are you allowed to go to the mound? Yeah. What other sport is the coach like time out? And he I'm going to walk field. onto the court <laughs> and I'm going to have a little chat with you and then I'm going to walk back. No one, you're not allowed to, you shouldn't be allowed to do yeah, that. Yeah. So the NBA and, and, uh, and NFL and during, during what would be their winter meetings like baseball have, they have a serious conversation with their competition committee every single year, every single off season they have serious. And I don't, baseball is not even close to doing that. They have kind of mid-level conversations that get tested out in the minor leagues and, and generally never make it to the majors, right? Yeah. Uh, but they, they talk about it a lot. They talk about changes, then they gauge the people's reaction. Some people freak out, and then they're just like, oh, never mind. Yeah, but you, I mean, what is this isn't fucking ancient Rome. You're going to let the mob shouting from the Coliseum decide whether or not the game is good or not? The, the, I, I'm telling you, the, the silent majority in politics is the same thing as it is in sports. Most of the, the, the loud people are going to bitch, but most people just want a better product for the most part, right? I mean, I don't, I don't, think, I don't think a lot of these things are going to be an issue. I think most baseball fans want the game to be different. I think right. more people, like I think baseball would be better off with more action. I think baseball would be better off with games moving faster. I think baseball would be better off with like more stolen bases and more, you know, that kind of stuff that made people love baseball in the 70s and 80s. Yeah, I do think people would like baseball more with that, but like, how are they going to make that happen? It is, uh, it is I, I can tell you how they're going to make it happen uh, with the juice, man. <laughs> I want to see people hitting 800 foot home runs. God damn it. That's what I want to see. And you know, you wrote, you actually wrote an article uh, the other day about um, pitchers going back to hit and how there's going to be a lot of injuries from that. And it's not from getting hit by the ball. It's like just swinging the bat, which they haven't done in almost a year and a half now. Right on a regular basis. Yeah, there was no DH. Uh, there was no pitchers hitting in 2020. Right. Nor should now, there ever be. pitchers hitting in 21. I don't, so that, that's that's the, a perfect the, example. I was a purist. I was like, the National League should But have why? Because I grew up that way. Yeah, that's stupid. <laughs> that's but stupid, as right? As, but as soon as 2020 hit, I was like, oh, this is way better. This yeah, is way fucking better. Of course it's fucking better. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to see pitchers hit unless it's Shohei Otani. Then I want to see him hit. I don't want to see him pitch, frankly. Right. I want, right. I want to see. Let me run this by you while we're on that subject. I, I don't know, understand why, and maybe it'll happen now that Joe Madden is the is the coach there because he likes to tinker, but 
Why hasn't Shoya Otani been, been used as a closer where, you know, he's available at the end of the game, but he's a hitter all game, every game? Because it's way more fun to see if he could start and hit at the same time. Yeah, but that's, I mean, God damn it. The Angels have to get their shit together. They've got some of the best. They got him, Rendon, and Mike Trout, and they can't make the playoffs. I think this is going to be, honestly, Otani's last chance to prove that he can make it work as a two-way. Right. I don't think they're going to give him another opportunity. This well, is going to be his fourth year. Yeah. He basically has gone two full years without pitching. Mm. He's re- he, But look, what was so tantalizing about Otani, and by the way, talking about what you could market in baseball, I mean, Shohei Otani is like the most talented overall baseball player in like 100 years. We should be talking Since Babe about Ruth, him yeah. More. It's insane. Um, the, we think back to back in 2018 for that two-month period where he was doing both and was amazing at both, and it was so awesome and tantalizing that you're like, oh, my God, if we could just like get back to that for the full season, it would be the right. greatest thing ever. And it's very hard to pull the plug on it because you saw it work yeah. for two months. And it was two amazing months, and he was throwing 100 yep. and then hitting like two homers the next day. But keeping, keeping that up for six months and then another month and a half in the playoffs is going to be a problem, right? I mean, I, that, that's a lot of mental stress on somebody. I don't, I don't know if anybody would be able it to might stand be hard. That. He did it in Japan, though. I know it's not the same thing. The season's a little shorter. It's, like well, it's, not quite. it's only 130 games, though. It's not like it's 50. I mean, it's it's still a pretty long season. Yeah, exactly. And he made it work, mm. and he's not old. I no, like, what, what I, it, I'm all for giving it one more shot. If it doesn't work this year, I do think you have to explore, like like you said, a closer thing. But how, he would be so much more valuable as a closer, though. I mean, if you if you think about his uh, if you think about his uh, wins above replacement numbers, just based on. Uh, his capability as a pitcher, right? Having being a three, like a a plus pitch pitcher with a hundred mile per hour fastball coming out of the bullpen, you're looking probably at a three to three and a half WAR every year. And his his performance at the plate, if he's not distracted by being a starting pitcher and being in that routine, you're probably looking at another three and a half, right? On his average, he's a very very good hitter, right? Yeah. The only so, thing to be weird about that is like, so if he's DHing, what do you do when you're gonna run him down to the bullpen? Uh, to warm up, I mean. Yeah, I mean, he's got to warm up and hit, I guess. It might yeah. it might become a problem there, but it is what it is, right? Yeah. I mean, you know that going in, though. Like, if you're coming in as a closer, typically that's a programmatic kind of situation. Yeah. It's not like I mean, a you're only bringing balance. him in if you're winning in the ninth inning. Yeah, so it's exactly. In that situation. So you kind of hope that most of the time you bring him in, he gets three outs, the game's over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's the ideal if it goes well. And, and if it doesn't go well, I mean, you just move him to a position, I guess, and then – uh, in extra innings, you know, whatever. But, but anyways, that's a, that's a good thought. I mean, again, that, that's a problem. <sighs> There's no bigger evidence of baseball's marketing problem. I mean, what you said is, is good. That's, that's good uh, insight about how they're constantly talking about the problems and never offering real solutions. But the, the biggest example of the bad marketing baseball has right now is they have two of the most, they actually have the two best players in baseball overall on that team, right? Because Shoya Tani is just the most talented overall because he can do mm. both. And then Mike Trout is obviously the best ba- player in baseball and they can't make the playoffs, right? They can't fucking, nobody watches the goddamn games because they're West they're, Coast. They're West Coast. I mean, it's like Pac-12. Nobody's yeah. picking Pac-12 They've, teams in the tournament because nobody watches West Coast. They have absolutely got to figure this shit out. They have a great product and, and a lot of people know about it, but nobody's watching it. Well, you just, you just really pinpointed an issue that it's very hard for baseball to overcome, and that's like the Angels problem, right? Yeah. The West Coast thing, that's true. But beyond that, they haven't made the playoffs, yep. despite having Mike Trout and now Shohei Otani. And how do you really solve that, right? In the NBA, if you have LeBron James, if you have the Mike Trout of basketball, mm-hmm. you are guaranteed to not just like go to the playoffs, but like pretty much guaranteed to like win, mm-hmm. like go to the finals, just by virtue of having him on your team. Right. If you have, you know... Tom Brady, it almost doesn't matter who else is on the team. Like, they're going to at least make the playoffs and probably go far. I mean, they just did it with the Buccaneers. Yep. And who can name an, a single other player on them unless you're a big football fan, you know? <laughs> Baseball is Mike Trout. The Angels have Mike Trout. It, does, it means nothing. It yep. has no bearing on their success because one individual player in baseball just can't have that much of an impact. You could go to a – you could go attend three Angels games, a whole series – and you could just say, I want to go see Mike Trout do something awesome. Mm. Well, guess what? He might go like two for 14, and the ball might get hit to him in the outfield like three times. And you've now spent all this money to go to three Angels games, 
and you've seen Mike Trout do nothing, and it's just sort of like normal. It's just like how it works in baseball. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Not, he won't have that big of an impact. He'll yeah. be on Mike Trout's on your TV screen if you're watching the Angels game for what, like six minutes? Yeah. Of for three game, hours. Yeah. yeah, for sure. LeBron's on TV for two hours of two hours and fifteen minutes. Right. That's a good point. Yeah, I mean, so how do how do you solve that? I mean, if you're if you're Major League Baseball and you you know you've got a marketing problem with Trout, and look, Trout isn't a guy that's a self promoter either. He doesn't really care about. He likes clouds. Uh, yeah, he just he's kind of like Clay Thompson. He's kind of likes to stare off into the distance and play with his dog and then hit hit baseballs. That's yeah. pretty much it. So I don't know. I don't. I honestly don't know how you you solve that one. To be honest, maybe yeah. maybe incentivize him to get involved in home run derbies and shit like that. You well, know, Fernando to, Tatis Jr. Is, seems to really want the, the spotlight he does in a, good yeah. way, in a good way yeah he's he's a i i really like that kid i think he's gonna go far i am curious because technically this would be considered his sophomore season i guess since he's got a full season under he still doesn't have a full season in major league from wire to wire under his belt no we got injured in 2019 yeah. last year was a short season yeah. so what's so, it gonna look like this yeah. year uh in his first full season after signing a huge long-term deal dudes in their first year after a huge long-term deal it's typically struggle right i mean more often than not they struggle but this kid's got firecrackers up his ass man he's like ready to <laughs> fucking he's flipping bats all over the place he, he doesn't care he's he loves playing baseball yeah so, and like the west coast thing time with the angels in the west coast i think it's a little overstated because look this year 2021 who are like the two teams everyone wants to see in baseball it's the dodgers and padres like that's the those are the teams that are, everyone wants to watch. Mm -hmm. Those, you know, and they're going to be playing at ten o'clock. So, like, yeah, Mike Trout is. Oh, he's never on TV. People always want to blame the West Coast. It's not going to stop people from paying close attention to San Diego this year. They're right. on the West Coast, and they're like the team of the season. I mean, it didn't stop ESPN from putting literally every single one of Barry Bonds at bats on ESPN. Right, right. It hasn't every time stopped the Lakers yeah. from being the Lakers. For yeah, all yeah, for sure. Years. They play on the West Coast too. So, right. So I what? So I wonder what it, if there is any salute. There may not be. I mean, if Trout doesn't want to promote himself, the league can't make him do it. They also can't make the Angels be a good franchise. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> right. Yeah, they, they can't, can't force Artie Moreno to sell the team and get someone else. Well, they could do that, I guess, if they got enough owners involved. But what I, are the rest of the baseball owners going to conspire against themselves? I doubt it. Right. I not mean, unless sure. there's a Donald Sterling incident. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> what we, we got to set this guy up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, what else is going on these days? What, uh, uh, are you excited? What do you? Uh, I liked your Larusa article the other day. Oh yeah, that uh, was good. How, what do you expect out of Tony Larusa this year? Because uh, lately, between you and um, uh, your article, and there was one on the Athletic uh, recently as well. Uh, when he got hired, people were a little like, "He's old." Like, does he have like some social issues with the players and currency in general and everything like that? I mean, Dusty Baker and Joe Madden are both ninety years right. old. Who gives a shit, dude? People were still just being that. Way. Yeah, so I agree. but everyone loves Dusty Baker. Come on, that's true. Dusty. Yeah, that's that's Dusty Baker's role in baseball for like the last fifteen years. It's like if somebody's if a team is having some some kind of personnel issues, like bring in Dusty, he'll handle it. He'll yeah. he'll do it. Yeah. I mean, he's like the that's the, exactly right. He's the Look master. Look at his last few jobs. He's like, Houston, yeah. Washington after Matt Williams, yeah. like. Who could bring this team together? He's Dusty. a fixer. He's Get a fixer for sure. Yeah. I mean, he's he's one of the great baseball personalities of all time. I love that dude. Actually, when I was a child, uh, my dad bought me this hitting tape series that he and uh, Bobby Bonds had made together. It was like, incredible. Uh, I had no idea who Dusty Baker was at the time because I was a child. I was right. like eight years old. I've been a fan of Dusty Baker's for, what, fucking 32 years now, I guess. Yeah. Love that dude. He um, had a team with Barry Bonds and Jeff Kent on it and got and stopped them from killing each other. Yeah, that right. alone Huge. put him in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You never saw one of those Papel Bond Bryce Harper grab by the throat issues there, yeah. really, which is surprising because Jeff Kent is kind of a dick. He's right? a monster dick. <laughs> yeah, and Barry Bonds had every ounce of chemical running through his body, <laughs> just rage chemicals going. <laughs> <up. laughs> oh man, what do you think about the DH? Is this? Do we got to get rid of this or what? The pitcher should not be hitting. Yeah, why would – why and, and no, by the way, I used to be like you too. I was like, oh, purist NL baseball strategy. I was like all in on it until like four or five years ago. And I was like, this is awful. <laughs> I don't want to see this guy well, hit. Man, they've you gotten – they were never good, but they've gotten markedly worse. worse. So yeah, much. They don't try. Yeah. They, they don't, they're told – unless you're Madison Bumgarner, basically – or like a few other guys, they're basically told to just stand there and don't swing. Yeah. 
So they don't want you to get hurt. Yeah, it, you well, have to like, be Bumgarner right. or Granky. Right. But was there a single time last season where anyone was like, hey, this game has been awesome. You know what would make it better? Max Scherzer stepping up to the plate <laughs> right now. Like, I mean, he does have people? cool eyeballs, I guess. So you could see him. Yeah, see it, his eyes, I right? will say Max Scherzer getting plunked at the plate would make the game a lot more interesting. But uh, Well, see this. All right, let's get into that then. So let's say we do get rid of the. I think the DH is going to go away in the next couple of years. They're going to bring it back this year. This and it's will be, be the last year without it. I, I agree. I almost guarantee. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think it's going to be uh, – it, it's just – People are going to get hurt. I agree with you this year. And also, it's going to slow down games. They're going to be boring and stupid. And uh, these guys can't bunt anymore. So, what's the point? Yeah, that's the thing. They can't even do their one job. Yeah. Like the 1990s play. Braves, Glavin, Maddox, Smoltz, oh, every one of them could bunt. Lay it down. Like Perfect. every one of them could do it. That, they took it seriously. They had contests during batting practice who could do it better. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, people don't care. Maybe that is what it is. I don't know. It's unsolved. Pitchers were throwing 88 back. Then. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> that it is, is a little true. different. Yeah, for sure. But here's my thing. If, if the DH does go away entirely, what is, you, you know how baseball is. It is a, it, it, in, in a lot of ways, it is a self-governing apparatus on the field. You do something stupid, you get hit. You know what I mean? And too many sure. people get hit and there's a fight, right? So how does that play out? I've got some ideas on how I think it should play out, but I would like to hear your opinion on this and how you think it's going to develop because, look, we're getting close. It's like probably next year or sometime in the next three years, the DH is there and the pitchers will never hit again. Correct, which means that if, if you're like the best hitter on the team and someone gets hit, you better, you know, be ready. Yeah, next time yeah. They come you're, up getting, you're getting plucked coming, for sure, yeah. They're coming for you. Look, that's never going to change, right? This idea of like self-policing and throwing balls at each other, mm -hmm. like it's just so ingrained in the culture of the game. For sure. For and better it, or worse, it's not going to go away. You know, it, it, I'm actually okay with it not going away. What I have a problem with is when pitchers throw at batters because their feelings got hurt. Yeah. It's like, oh, Fernando Tatis hit a grand slam against you on a 3-0 pitch. Well, so what? Strike throw him out next time. Pitch. Yeah. I mean, like you're going to hit a guy for that? You're you're basically like, re you're re you're technically rewarding him with a with a <laughs> fucking base. You know, yeah. that's really stupid to be. Here's what I think should happen because you're right. If if a pitcher hits Fernando Tatis Jr. Let's say somebody from the Dodgers does something. Bellinger comes up. He's probably going to get hit, right? You got to hit him. That's how that's, it goes. That's part of the game. Yeah, like if there's a hard slide, someone takes a guy out. Of course, yeah. You know, goes for the knees or something with their spikes. Like that's one thing. I get it. Not like, oh, you stared at your homer like a little too long, and I was my feelings were hurt from that. Yeah, um, yeah. No, that's Dude, the, the Marlins <clears throat> last last the last two years have been like headhunting Ronald Acuna for pimping home runs, basically. Or not even just pimping home runs, just killing them. Well, they should just throw better pitches, probably. Well, um, it's but just think. one pitcher, right? It's like one guy in the Marlins has like some problem with Acuna. It, yeah, it's number... Uh, Urania. Urania. Yeah, Urania. Urania. Yeah, Urania. Yeah, Urania. Urania. Was the, he like hates Ron Acuna. Yeah. Yeah, he was the main reason. one, but they they still keep hitting him. It happened in the playoffs this last year, didn't, too. Didn't Urania like run into the some other team's bench one time, too? Like he ran, ran into their dugout, basically, or some shit like that, that just trying to start a fight? Yeah, I just remember when he hit... <laughs> When he hit Acuna on the broadcast, I was watching that game live mm. on the broadcast. Jeff Francoeur was like, "I don't get. I played with him. He's a nice guy. I don't know what he's what's going on." And he just <laughs> he just drilled Acuna. Maybe it's like LeBron and that dude who allegedly slept with LeBron's mom. Oh, That's Delonte some, West. Yeah, Delonte West. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. But here's what I think should happen. I think that uh, since. Pitchers are throwing really fast these days. I mean, you're, I, the average fastball has gone up in the last 10 years for sure. But there are also, if mean, median, mode-wise, there's also a lot more guys who throw high 90s than there ever have been before. Uh, and that shit hurts. A lot of them aren't respectful about the I, I know it sounds crazy, but they're not respectful about the way they hit other players. Hit them in the ass or the rib cage. You don't throw at their fucking head ever. Or their hands or arms. Or their hands or knees or any of that bullshit. You, if, you, if you're a major league pitcher, you should be able to throw right at somebody's uh, midsection basically in their ass right um but the pitcher now faces no there's there's no recourse for the batter against the pitcher themselves i think that we need to institute some hockey rules right you can charge the mound you get it for sure get ejected out of that game but you don't get some long suspension for that like you we need to build these faces and heels in baseball people need to hate the other team fans need to hate the other team like yes. it needs to be you need to be in city field 
uh, where you hear Larry over and over again. And then Chipper Jones rocks one to right center field. And just like basically a middle finger to the whole stadium. Because remember, he had like fucking what, 310 with like 36 he, or 37 home runs in his career? season throughout. Yeah. Like his career it was about a that season's worth. Full, yeah. And well, it was like an MVP. Yeah. Se- yeah, yeah. yeah. And that, that was great for baseball. But it's in, in hockey, it, the more you allow the players to govern themselves with, with certain rules and stuff, like the third man in rule in hockey is really good. Uh, everybody knows that once it goes down to the ice, the fight's over, all that stuff. I feel like that is a really good solution for baseball. It makes it more exciting, right? And I don't know what, what's the downside of that. Like, they don't want it to they seem, they don't want it to seem brutish. Motherfucker, it's professional sports. Well, it's testosterone. Throwing on the a field. rock 100 miles an hour at someone's pretty brutish. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, Randy Johnson <laughs> allegedly keeps a fucking, a, a, bunch of baseballs next to his bed in case an intruder breaks and i got a gun <laughs> but randy johnson's got baseballs next to his bed I'd, i think i'd rather get shot to fuck be yeah dude at least it, at least it's over quick shit <laughs> i don't want to be that bird that he threw <laughs> the dove or whatever that he hit mid-flight god no. no so what do you what do you think about that come on i think the reds and pirates have a good little feud going on right now oh, yeah. from a couple of years ago yeah. was, they had like a series of huge fights oh yeah i don't even know why I don't even know what caused it. They just hated each other. Well, was it after Yasiel Puig got traded to the Reds? Because he tends to get under people's skin quite a bit. I don't know. Like, this guy, Amir Garrett, was like, started a huge fight. And he was like asking for all comers to come out to the mound. It was a crazy <laughs> thing. And like, it was great. The, part of the problem, with, it's probably all sports problem, but definitely true in baseball. Like, they don't dislike each other enough. The team. Yeah, like, I agree with that. Yeah. They're, they're all, all buddy, buddy. Like, the Yankees and Red Sox hated each other back in like, Oh three, oh four, right? Like they actually like, disliked each other's people, and that was great. Now they're all like best friends. They don't dislike each other. They would never actually get mad at one another. Yeah, the NBA is the same way, and and so is the NFL too. Although the NFL, you still get like Tom Brady's cool, like talking shit to uh, Tyrion Matthew in the same yeah, yeah, type yeah. of thing. Yeah. But no, you're <laughs> right. Like they're all bros. Like it's it breaks my heart. If you can't tell, this is a baseball show. Like it's not a Braves broadcast, but we're both Braves fans, yeah, so yeah. we I bring am. up the Braves a lot. Uh, but like, it breaks my heart that Freddie Freeman is like friends with Bryce Harper. Yeah, that's I weird don't want to me. That. They should hate each other. They like at least in your own division, you should hate everybody, right? I mean, that's yeah. Seems... You want the teams that really have like some juice against each other. Yeah, for sure. They really want to like beat the other. I'm sure they want to win, but they just don't. Have, it's not the same. It's no, there's no real emotion there. No, there isn't. You no, know? I, I I don't like it either. Frankly. No, it's it's, it's... it, it kind of ruins it for me when I know that. Speaking of Freeman. Another way that I think we could really um, make the game more exciting is identifying players like him and others who are just chatterboxes on the field. Like yeah. last season in spring training, I don't even remember this, before COVID shut everything down, uh, they had Freeman mic'd up for every single game. And he's just talking shit. But it's, it's like uh, Philip Rivers style shit. He has a goofball. Where it's like he's talking a lot of shit, but there's no swearing or anything. It's yeah. just like super goofy stuff. <laughs> and uh, it made the game so much more enjoyable to watch, knowing that was going on. That inside stuff that happens on the field and, uh, is some of my favorite stuff. I don't know why you wouldn't add an element like that, especially uh, with these TV contracts. I mean, we sell marketing all the time, so I know about individual media modules that you can sell out to people like social media and, and various other things like activations, right? So why not make that a thing on the TV contract? Like, hey, you know, if the person buys the premium package, they also get this. Right, which is yeah, Freddie Freeman the, talking shit. The those whole game. spring training games where the players are mic'd up live during the game are amazing. They're fucking great. They're the greatest. And I get why you maybe can't do it during a real game when it counts, <laughs> but well. it's so awesome when you hear when you're like where they're like chatting during mm. the game. You know, I want a microphone on Zach Granke at all times. All I times. think he's just doing math in his head all the time. Do I he, don't actually know if you do want that. <laughs> <laughs> I think you want it. He, he's, like pro, he's like proposing fantasy football trades and shit. Yeah. That's he's one of my, a, that's one of my a favorite He's one of stories. a kind cat. Yeah, he really is. Um, but I like the um, Yasiel Puig with a lot of the other uh, Latin-born players talks a lot of shit. They like fucking try to tackle each other going on and off the field. He's throwing shit at him all the time. Yeah. That's really funny, man. I mean, yeah. it's, it's funny and it also shows... Yeah, you can be chummy, but also, for, I was in the military. I don't know if you looked into our show or not, but I was in the military. Chummy, to me, means uh, me talking as much shit as I can get away with talking to you, right? That's what a friend is to me. Like, yeah, if you need help with something, then I will help you absolutely with no question to ask. But if everything's calm, I'm going to be on you all the time, <laughs> talking shit and talking about your mom, whatever I can get away with. You know what I mean? Because that's, to me, that's, I don't, maybe that's just how I grew up. I don't know. 
I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. I grew up, but I do. <laughs> no, but like you do bring up a great point about Puig and really the Latin players in general. Mm-hmm. There is sort of this big cultural divide in baseball, right? Between the American born players, the Latin born players and the Latin players are like the way they were taught to play the game is totally different. Right. So much more personality, so much more flair, like go watch or go to or watch some of these games from like the Dominican league. It's just like a totally different experience. It's like chaos. It's like so fun. It's like so, all the players are like pimping homers and like oh, yeah. talking smack to one another. And there's so much energy and excitement. And then these guys come to the major league and they're like, oh, you breathe the wrong way. So right. I'm going to like fight you. I'm going to teach you how we do it here in the show, young man. Oh, yeah. You yeah, just yeah. Sh- you, like, you shut your mouth. Maybe you should be learning from them, not the other way around. You can't talk shit when you have a, a horseshoe lip in just of all tobacco. Oh, on your yeah, yeah, yeah. When you got a beaver dip in. Right. Yeah, yeah you yeah. can't. <laughs> Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, but yeah, the, they these you know the for whatever the American-born players still like have sort of the dominant baseball culture, and they really try to sort of suppress that energy that like the Latin players bring to the game, where it's like no, we should be celebrating that. For that's sure. like what baseball needs and wants, which we want. I think that's a problem uh, in in media and marketing as well. I mean, everybody is there, there's this old school ideology that worked back in the day when you were doing uh, uh, letter mail ads and stuff like yeah. that. But this is digital media. You're competing. One, you're competing with, uh, uh, with a just way more uh, content than ever before, right? You're also competing with a, with a shorter attention span than ever before. Um, By far. If you're not willing to evolve, you will die in this industry. And, and that's, what base, or that's what football and basketball has discovered. They're doing it way better than anybody else. That's more than, more than them, though. <clears throat> the UFC is doing it right. The UFC, for better or worse, has taken a lot from uh, World Wrestling Federation, like the faces and heels thing, and, and promoting their individual fighters against each other. And then Dana is pretty fucking, uh, pretty transparent about what's going on. Like, he'll just say what he thinks. Like, I, I don't think this guy could win. Yeah. And then when the guy wins, he's like, fucking man, I was wrong about that. <laughs> like, he is very open and honest. <laughs> <laughs> about what's going on there, and he puts the he puts the athletes out front, even though they don't really pay them that well. But he still puts the athletes <laughs> out front. Uh, I think it's really interesting the way they do stuff, and I don't understand why uh, some of the other major sports don't do that. I mean, your product is the athlete. Ultimately, your product is the relationship between the fan and the athlete. Yeah. Right. Well, do you think with baseball, it's more the fan and the team though? Because like Jared was talking about earlier, like the athlete doesn't always deliver on a given day or series because just that's just the nature of. There's a, yeah, certainly there's an element of the team thing. You see that in college sports too. There's still so many diehard college basketball fans, even with the one and done shit right now. Yeah, I, I don't understand yeah. how. I don't know why there are Duke basketball fans at this point. Like, why would you even fucking tune in for that shit? Not because they're bad, but because even if there's a great player, you're going to see him for fucking 34 games, and that's it. Yeah, you don't get to know the guy. Yeah, I, that that is that's a that's a failed industry in my opinion. College basketball, but it's ratings so, are up, baby. Ratings are up because they everybody missed it last year. <laughs> let's be real. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's I think it'll they they are one of the few. I mean, UFC and college basketball are the only ones that are maintaining or increasing their ratings right now. Yeah, currently anyway. Yeah, I mean, baseball has the the labor problems, and baseball can't be under overstated. I mean. Part of the problem is that the players union and the owners hate each other so much. Yeah, I mean that relationship is is it's broken fundamentally, mm. and it's very possibly, if not probably, going to lead to a work stoppage a year from now. I mean it's a complete disaster, and I can't even imagine what a strike or a lockout would do to baseball in the future. And I hope it doesn't happen. Yeah, but they hate each other, and there's no mutual respect, no mutual trust, no sort of understanding. So, like, why is baseball have trouble like, marking its players? Well, maybe because, like, fundamentally, the league and the players, like, dislike each other. Right. I'm not saying, like, Rob Manfred hates the players, like, personally. I'm t- it's business, right? Like, it's not, like, it's, it's, like, more high level than that. But there's no trust. Like, there's no desire to, like, work together. Because all they do is fight with one another over every little thing. It's a big problem. It's like, a huge problem that baseball has, this, this labor dispute. No fan wants to talk about the labor side because it's complicated and it's boring and like who really cares like what hey they're billionaires and millionaires why can't they just settle their differences well like it's <laughs> yeah. not that simple right you know? <laughs> it would no, be funny if rob Rainfried straight up hated buster posey though yeah. he's just like hey buddy <laughs> fuck you. yeah like I, I, all the other players are cool but buster posey can get fucked uh no i, I, I don't know how he feels about trevor bauer 
Well, I don't know how anybody feels <laughs> right. about Trevor Bauer. That guy's uh, he's a loose cannon. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, th- I think you're right about that. It's a very complicated situation, and I'm not sure where they go. I think it's it's a it's a structural problem. Why does the commissioner of baseball work for the owners and not for baseball? Right. That seems we and it's the same with football. Goodell works for the owners. He doesn't work for anybody else. Yeah. And it's obviously a huge conflict of interest when a guy who can make uh, edict like. Uh, decisions on a day-to-day basis works for one side over the other. That's a fucking problem, right? And is often the uh, uh, judiciary of the, yeah, the judge, jury, and executioner. Yeah, you know yeah I mean? like that's what the union's for, and they have all these arbitration hearings and stuff. But look, this all sort of goes back to, and again, like I'm with the Wall Street Journal, so forgive me for bringing this up, but I have to. It's about economics, right? Mm-hmm. Why is baseball the way it is? Because there's no salary cap, and right. therefore any sense that goes to the players is a sense not going to the owners and vice versa and by the way i'm not advocating for a salary cap like the players union in baseball having won this sort of open market system is an incredible victory for them and it leads the baseball players signing like 12-year contracts worth 350 million dollars it doesn't have any other sport right great (laughs) for them but it does create an adversarial relationship whereas in the nba it's like, hey, the more money that the industry makes is more money for the players. Right. Because we're sharing the pot, the pie. We're splitting this pie. In baseball, it's like, no, no, no. We're, we want more of the pie. Yeah, for and sure. And they constantly get a fight over that, you know? Yeah, the NBA has something more akin to like a chain CPI economic index, something like that. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it makes a lot more sense, frankly, than it what It benefits everyone has. to work together for a common goal. Right. I mean, it's Whereas like having in baseball, it's competing interests. Like yeah, we yeah. want money, so you don't get it. So what would that look like in baseball? I mean, obviously the players have been fucked over by the owners so much, at least from their perspective, that they giving an inch seems like giving a mile at any point. And it's the same thing in, in the NHL as well. And I wonder, um, I mean, ha- having some kind of more commission-based structure seems a lot more realistic to keep the game going than what what's going on right now. You can't have yeah. a tagging. I mean, what what industry? Uh, ultimately succeeds when management and labor are constantly in fucking fights with each other. No, it's very bad. And like, I'm not saying that players should agree to a salary cap. Like they really shouldn't because again, that's an incredible victory for them. And like, the, that's sort of their last holdout is like, we do not have a salary cap, but look, it's a problem that, you know, Aaron judge is going to make like $700,000 this year. Yeah. Right. Because he hasn't gotten enough service on anymore. I don't, he might be making more now, but you know what I mean? Whatever. Mm. Uh, insert random young player, Juan Soto, you know, like one of the best three players in baseball is making like probably a million dollars or whatever yeah. because he's so young. Like there's probably a system where younger players can get paid sooner. Oh, right? 500. Like, that's what Juan Soto's making? 578. Jeez, that's, that's embarrassing to be honest. Right. And yeah, like one day he'll get a giant contract, but that's Juan Soto. Like what we've seen the last few years and what the cause of all this anger is, is that Teams don't have to pay players when they're young. Mm. That's the rule. That's what they agreed to. But there was always this un, sort of unspoken agreement where it's like you'll get totally screwed early in your career, but you'll probably be paid like more than you deserve as a veteran. Like later in your career when you're a free agent, you'll probably get overpaid like relative to your performance. You're kind of you get paid for what you did, not what you're going to do. But then the owner said, why are we doing that? Screw that. So we're not going to pay you when you're young because we don't have to. And then when you turn 30 and you're afraid, we're not going to pay you much because we don't want to because you're not that good anymore. So now the players are like, hey, like we keep now we're taking it on both ends. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we either got to get paid more when we're older or when we're younger, but it can't be neither. I mean, that's the classic labor versus management deal, though, right? So you give up like management comes like, hey, we have some budgetary cuts. We'll give you some benefits on the back end. But for now, we have to decrease or, or maintain the same salary. Then when it comes time to pay out the benefits, they're like, whoops. <laughs> it's similar. It. Like, the problem is like baseball wants to cry about competitive integrity. They're like, oh, well, if we allow players to become free agents earlier or we force you know, young players make what they are really deserve, mm. then what are the Royals going to do? Like, they'll never win because they'll lose all their players right away. Right. And it's like <clears throat> I understand like the, that concern, like the competitive – integrity issue mm. but like it's also not the player's problem no it's you definitely know, not it's the like, player's problem it's, the it's also not their problem that the owners routinely manipulate that system by bringing guys up late and all this other bullshit i mean just to like get an extra year uh off on oh, that yeah. arbitration right. deal yeah that year, maybe an Chris age-based Bryant. free agency system yeah. where it's like when you turn 
26, seven years old, you're a free agent. Regardless of, yeah. Uh, right. So all the, and Noah, what would happen if, if that happened, by the way, you'd see 18, 19 year olds in the major leagues. Absolutely. Every would. Year. Yeah, you absolutely would. Literally that day, every team would start calling up like these teenagers. As soon as they were ready to play and could compete at that level, they would yeah. be in the major leagues. Because uh, why right, the fuck would you not? How was Acuna yeah. and Soto? Eight, like 19, 19 and 20? Yeah. Yeah. 19 yeah. and 19. You wouldn't have teams going like, oh, no, no, he has to go work on his defense for three yeah, weeks. Yeah, like minor. no one gives They're a like, fuck here, about man. defense. We're, we're in the Bill James era. No one cares about fucking defense right now. Are you kidding me? People care about launch angle and fucking uh, spin rate. <laughs> Fucking also, the, the, they're the best at defense when they're 18, 19, 20. For sure, like yeah. They loop, Unless I'm, you're learning a new position. Yes. But otherwise, but like, yeah. That's like, always the excuse, though. Oh, we need him a little more seasoning yeah. at second base. It's like, you know, another problem, again, like wanting less baseball, you have Major League Baseball teams intentionally not fielding the best team they could field on purpose. Right. Just so they could, like, have that player, like, six years from now. Right. Like, it's so dumb. How, so if you say, all right, Hey, you're a free agent when you turn 27, no matter what, all of a sudden guys like teams will be like, we got to get this guy to the big leagues now. Yeah. yeah. So we could like, and that's what fans want. They want like young star players. They want their team, their favorite team to be I fielding mean, like the best possible the, team. Uh, Mike Trout's first year was kind of, it was, it was okay. It wasn't great. But the, when he came in for that sophomore year and everybody knew they were getting a full season out of him and when Acuna came up and stuff like yeah. that, so much excitement in the game. I mean, that's one of the, and when Andrew Jones in, in 98, or how about the, the best example didn't pan out. Uh, that first Jason Hayward game was one of the most electric opening yeah. days. It was I've awesome. Ever Especially seen. after he had a 500-foot home run a couple of days earlier in spring training. And yeah. Chipper Jones was like, this guy's going to be a Hall of Famer. It didn't turn out that way. But, right. I mean, yeah, it was that super was exciting. Yeah. Goddamn electric. Fans love young players like that. They love young stars. Like They don't want to see him laying, like, laboring in AAA. No. Like, no, get them up here now. Like, it, they're it, ready. Let's it, go. It makes sense to me if like an NBA team is going to do that because being a seven seed in the NBA is just hell. Like there's no point in in because you're not going to win. But uh, a baseball team, w when you're in the playoffs, f fucking anything can happen. Well, I mean, the Marlins yep. twice won, won as a wild card team, and then the fucking Angels also won as a wild card team, right? Won the World yeah. Series. Oh, multiple. Uh, the the Royals. Playoffs, basically, in the playoffs in baseball, I'm sort of. Once you get past like these one game playing rounds, also, yeah, yeah. like once you get to like the series, is it's basically every team has an equal chance, except like, for Oakland. Basically, <laughs> I mean, Oakland <laughs> can't win in the playoffs. Blow, Come on, yeah, like basically, like you be, it, that's what we've seen over time. It's like basically, there's six teams, and all six of them, like, basically have the same chance of winning the world series. Right. So, you get to the playoffs, like, it's all you need to do get there, and you got a shot. So, in a normal industry. You would see uh, generational turnover, right? The new presidents and and operations officers would be completely different. The problem is, is that guys with the real clout are the owners, and they're all old billionaires that yeah. are in. And there's no way to get rid of them. No, they're in. Unless they choose to leave. Correct. Yeah. So I mean, I, I don't know what the solution for that is, but I know baseball needs to get younger mentally. Otherwise, they're going to be fucked. Do right? you do you think? What do you think? Uh, it could just be for show, but do you think it helps that some teams are getting like, you know, the Royals get like Pat Mahomes as a part owner or like the kind of a face of the franchise owner and like LeBron James with the Red Sox? Does that make any difference in terms of? I that? absolutely think that should happen. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> I mean, it's funny. You see this push pull all the time because on the one end, you have like baseball's like marketing and social media people pushing like, let the kids play, like showing like highlights of home runs and like, emphasizing all that stuff and then you have like on the other hand they're like arguing over stupid nonsense and it's like so on the one hand mlb knows like what the problem is but yet the people who are actually in charge who are yeah. the owners like they don't really care about any of that stuff they just like want to make money yeah and i'm not even saying that as like a bad thing like yeah that's their point like they're trying to make money i'm not saying making money is bad like it's not try to make money but they, it's like a very short-sighted way of doing it yeah. how can we make every possible cent we can right now yeah without very much regard for like well what is going to be the state of baseball like 10 years from now and maybe they're like i'll be dead or i won't own the team then so why <laughs> do i care i just want to boost the value of my team now so i can sell it i mean fine but that just hurts everybody it now. is you know, it's the, very the, myopic, the franchise yeah. valuations won't just go up forever mm. if everybody has that attitude yeah, I mean, everybody feels like they're invested in Bitcoin right I mean, now, but at some dude, point it's going to level out. I mean, when the Royals are going for a bill, 
Like, yeah, I know, right? That's wild. It's wild. Right, and it's, it won't happen indefinitely. No, it's just like every team value will just go up. Yeah, and they're think. they're tripping over uh, dollars to pick up dimes right now. It's very myopic. It's 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 stupid. Well, you know, I, I don't know if it, it's probably not going to change to be honest. So luckily, there's a lot of young, exciting players that'll keep it that that'll keep the lights on for a little while. We'll see what happens after that. I wonder if you've got any. Uh, any uh, uh, hot takes for this season? What are you excited about this season, and what do you think is going to happen that people might not think about right now? I'm very excited there's going to be an actual season. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> Start off with that. Is that a hot take? Like a full 162-game season, like which won't get interrupted by 25 players all having COVID at once yeah, like yeah, we yeah. had for sure. last year? That was a, a total nightmare. Something that I, that I don't think people will expect. Oh, man. So hard to predict. Okay, this is like sort of a hot take. Maybe it's not that hot. I don't know. I think my sort of hot take is that like the I think the Yankees aren't going to be as great as everyone thinks. Like I think they're going to be good because they're the Yankees. But yeah, like, yeah. <clears throat> I don't think they're like amazing. Now that rotation is is not in good shape. If Clover their doesn't, pitching is so bad. If Clover yeah. doesn't come back and have an amazing season, they're fucked this year. And to be honest, I, at this point in in the this current iteration of the Yankees. You should expect to get a full season combined out of Judge and, and Stanton, right? Yeah, like them each playing 80 games. Yes, basically, right? right? So, yeah, the, I, I don't think – I mean, I've got them – We I, I think before Jimenez got hurt, I really thought the White Sox were the favorite for the AL pennant. I don't know now. We'll see what happens. But, uh, uh, I mean, I don't – it's probably the Astros or Yankees, even, even with the Yankees' struggles, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think the Yankees are still going to be good. Like the mm. AL East is kind of weak. Yeah. Relatively speaking, it's like Boston is down and Baltimore yeah. being totally in the toilet. And Tampa Bay, you know, kind of probably regressed. They had to. They lost more than World Series uh, appearance. Yeah. yeah, they lost but, two of their best pitchers. So, we'll yeah, see. I'm just like, I think people are sort of overlooking like the fact that no one knows who's going to pitch after Garrett Cole. Yeah. It's like Garrett Cole and like a bunch of random guys off the street unless Corey Kluber think magically really good. Well, he hasn't he hasn't pitched a full season in three years, right? Who, Cole Which or is Kluber? like, how could you Kluber. count on him? Or like, Jamison, yeah. Tylon, like, he's theoretically really good, but he hasn't pitched in like two years. So, yeah. you know, and the I other, don't know. The other two guys are five-plus ERA guys on the back end of the rotation. That's yeah, not like Jordan thing. Montgomery, right. Domingo yeah. Herman, who hasn't pitched in forever. And yeah. You know, had his whole domestic violence suspension. Yeah, yeah. So, who are the Yankees yeah, going to trade down. for? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I, I, there, there are guys that people aren't going to be able to pay next year, even in arbitration. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, we, did we say Luis Castillo yesterday? Probably. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know if the Reds. Why would they bother hanging on to him if they're not going to be competitive? Yeah. I, it's, it's it's so hard to know. There's always some team you just never see coming in baseball. Yeah. Always. For sure. More yeah. so than other sports. Like, there's always some team. That is amazing that you never thought it was going to be good and some team that like you thought was going to be amazing that's terrible. It's yeah, like we, always every year. It's it's like that. We had uh, Ben Verlander from Fox on yesterday. He thinks that the Brewers are going to be exceptional this year. And he, he might be right about that. I mean, Yelich has got a big chip on his shoulder. He didn't like how things played out for him last year. Yeah. Look, he's, he, that division is so weak, you probably it, only need to win like 85 games. Yeah, for real. I mean, it's going to be them in St. Louis competitively. Yeah. yeah, or like Chicago's, you know, they still have some pieces too, but you probably mm. don't need to be that good to make the playoffs in that division. Speaking of Chicago, do you think uh, Chris Bryant lasts in the, in the Cubs this year? Or is he gone? I mean, if they're in the hunt, I think they won't trade him. Right. You know, like if they are competing for the playoffs, they won't get rid of him. The guys don't think, even if like you would argue that would be like the smart thing to do, whatever, for the future. It's like if you're in, if you can make the postseason, like maybe win another World Series, you can't trade him. Right. You know, you yeah. can't. Like, how would you sell that to your fans? No, Cubs fans. Especially if you're the Cubs. Cubs fans you know, put up with enough money. bullshit for right. this, dude. Well, I was going to say, if there's one team that can deal with just being shitty, like, I've, you know, Wrigley Field and Wrigleyville, like, you don't really need a good team no. to have a good time with the Cubs, no. unlike most other. No, the Wrigley, That's what worked for them for 110 years. <laughs> yeah. so. Wrigley, Wrigley Field is like a super hot girl that can't do math. You know what I mean? Like, she's still super hot, right? Yeah. Come on. It's fine. I think the Braves are going to be awesome. Oh yeah, I think. I mean, like honestly, really great. If the Bra I think if the Braves can do something in free agency to get a closer, I think they're going to win the World Series. Frankly, but we'll see. They right? they, they should have been the World Series last year. Yeah. Let's be honest. They I'm, had the Dodgers on the ropes, oh teetering. Yeah, you can't. I bet you about this so much. They were like completely. They were falling down. If Brian Snicker brings back Freed on short rest, they win that series, right? 
Like that kid I is young. They had it one. They had him on the ropes. They, they, they were three one, weren't they? Yeah. yeah. So you, you're three, one. you're three one, and then you go into game five, and you can That's bring back one. Freed on short rest, or you can go with a bullpen game and basically give it away. And they Did we, gave was it away. Was Kyle Wright game five? Uh, no, it was a bullpen. Oh no, game. Then Kyle, Kyle Wright was six, Kyle, and then our yeah. Kyle, Kyle yeah. Wright was the game that they bombed us. Yeah, it was like two or three. Wait, like three. the first inning, we broke our own record. Yeah. For first Ian Anderson run. is so good. He's really good. He's, He's legitimately so good. Well, see, they sent they sent uh, right down, right? So yeah, Bryce Wilson start uh, as our number five starter to start the year, while because Sor- Soroka's like got a month with the Achilles. And yeah, yeah. I love Bryce Wilson. I talk about this all the time because he's just. A big dumb Texas boy just throws hard rocks. He throws a heavy ball, yeah, man. Heavy, Jesus Christ. Like a lot he of just, singers. He, I was talking to my friend during the game that he pitched against the Dodgers. Mm-hmm. Like this, I can't believe this guy. And my buddy played catcher all through high school on like uh, uh, AAU type teams yeah. or whatever. He was like, dude, sometimes you just need a, an idiot throwing heat. Like that's all <laughs> you need. <laughs> I do think the Braves. I think the Braves and Mets. Like maybe they could be a little juice there too. Like moving forward. I like think the there's going to be all their money is going to be a thing. And yeah. I, there's there's definitely going to be uh, some shit that goes down between. I mean, uh, Ian Anderson is actually a native New Yorker. I don't know if he's a yeah, Mets fan or not. Yeah, New York. Yeah, but I, he he's he's uh, he's not an idiot Texan. But no. he's he's a he is a very at at such a young age he's he's polished as a he's not a thrower he's a pitcher at 22 years old. That is not something you see very frequently. Yeah. Well, they yeah, all, he's awesome. They, if they get Soroka back and they're going into the playoffs with like full bore Freed Soroka and Anderson. Like, yeah. And don't they forget, you got Charlie Morton Plus in the Charlie fourth Morton, spot yeah. with a lot of pedigree in the playoffs. Yeah, Morton. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's a that's a really good team, and you know, having uh having that experience over the last couple of years of actually being in the playoffs, I thought they were a little early to the game last year. I thought they were too good, too fast, almost, uh, and didn't necessarily have the seasoning or experience or or the personnel to win. And they outperformed what I thought they would do last year. This year, I expect them to win. Yeah, yeah. It's, the the pleasant surprises are over. Yeah, yeah, no, they they need to win now. But I mean, you look, we'll see how Pache develops. That'll be a big fucking deal, right? He'll play elite defense, so it'll be fun. Yeah, uh, he he can bat. He can bat two. They have enough offense. Yeah, yeah, eight. for sure. I mean, my other hot take is that Truist Park, besides being a horrible name, <laughs> is like a big zero in my opinion. Really? Not a, not a fan. No I personality. I, I haven't no, been. You haven't been. It's you know, it's it's not the only one. Like a bunch of the new stadiums. Or like the one in Texas that just opened like kind of like this too, yeah, where it's yeah. like if it had opened like eight years ago or ten years ago, it would have been like this is awesome. But now there's just been so many of these like new stadiums; they're all just kind of the same. Yeah, yeah. They're all blend into each other. Like that's why I, I hate I hate what Derek Jeter's done to Marlins Park. Mm. Marlins Park was awesome. Yeah, it was, great. it was so weird. It was the weirdest stadium I've ever been to. It was like a spaceship that had neon green on the wall. There's a fish tank. There was that ridiculous statue thing that was the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my life. It was great. And now Jeter's like, we got to get rid of that. We got to get, we're painting the walls blue. We're getting rid of the fish. We're getting rid of the statue. We're getting rid of the nightclub. It's like, why? Now yeah. Mons Park sucks. I don't get it. I mean, it's, it, it, remi- it reminds you of those stadiums built in the seventies, the cookie cutter stadiums, like uh, uh, the Oakland Coliseum and all those. And, Veterans. And, uh, Veterans. Three Rivers. Three Rivers. Uh, Bush, although Bush had some, Bush yeah. had some charm. Bush was all right, yeah, and then the one in uh, Cincinnati. What was it called? Uh, Riverfront. Riverfront, yeah, stadium. Yeah, this looks all yeah. the same now. Where, where's the green monster? Where's the fountain? Where's something right. that makes it look different? Marlins Park had that. They had all this weird stuff. Yeah, and yeah, it was totally trippy, and yeah, it was like totally tacky, but it was also so so Miami. It, like felt like Miami when you're in that place. Yeah, like, I mean, so over the top. Even even you know? Minute Maid. I mean. It looks like the the Astros are in a lot in a lot of ways rebuilding their team to play doubles and steals baseball, right? Like the yeah. fucking nineteen eighties uh, Cardinals. We talked about this yesterday. Yeah. I think that's a really yeah, smart. Yeah, but they move. got rid of the hill. They they got got rid of, that was fuck that hill. <laughs> I like that hill. I like seeing. Remember Jim Edmonds climbing that hill to catch that ball over his shoulders. That's yeah. one of the yeah. best plays I've ever seen. Yeah, I mean Andrew. I did mean, like too. it was so stupid. The hill so stupid. It was a terrible idea. They still but got the train. Was like, <laughs> they got the train. They got the Crawford boxes. Yeah. We got to go basketball style where there's a fucking linebacker out there tackling outfielders <laughs> just trying to catch the ball and shit. <laughs> you guys know about the Savannah Bananas? Oh, we talked about them. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah. They they uh, got some interesting rules over there. They, I don't know what the fuck's going on there. That's the weirdest shit I've ever seen in my life. I love it because it's not even it's not even a minor league team, right? It's a collegiate ball. It's type. like the Harlem Globetrotters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like they're like they don't have walks. Like if you get ball four, you just 
Start Apparently running. If you get four balls, you just get to run. Yeah. And the other thing was to throw the ball around to every single player on the field. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you what do you think their strategy is going to be? Do you throw it to left field first, or do you throw it to third, then left, and how do you oh, do? Oh yeah, that? we were you saying that. Throw third. it to left field first, dude. He can't reach. Well, really. I mean, if you're Johnny Bench, you could. Yeah, right? that dude could throw the ball. I've se- I've seen a video of him standing at home plate and throwing the ball over the fucking left field. I, I think wall. you go catcher to third base to left field, mm. center right first second short. That's I think what we came up with as well. Yeah. But do they have to be in position? So can is second base going out like a cutoff man at that point and then throwing it at short at second base? I don't know. I have not quite <laughs> studied the rule book. <laughs> have we gotten fully into it? Oh, boy. All right. Well, this is the point in the show where we get to the drinking bro of the week, somebody that inspired you in the come up like when you were uh, young. Maybe somebody got you into writing or your parents or whatever. Who's it going to be? It could be a woman as well. Yeah, someone when sure. I was, has it been someone when I was young? Anytime. It's your, your pick. You choose. When is this? When when is this? People hearing this? What day is it right now? Um, it'll be what Tuesday next week, probably. I think so. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Well, that has to be my wife because we're she's giving birth to twins in a week, less than oh, a week wow. from when this airs. Well, congratulations so. on that. I'm glad you didn't <laughs> do the dude thing where you say we're having twins because you're not having shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've done nothing. I just sit here and bring her food when she's hungry. Are these, and, uh, are these your first kids? They are our first two. So oh, I, nice. my wife is also pregnant and I'm watching her just like suffer through this pregnancy. And I was like, dude, we just should have had twins. Cause she wants more than one. Like we just should have knocked like two out of the yeah. way right up now, front. Why don't we talk again like six months? <laughs> Let's see how we're feeling then. <laughs> yeah, cause you're not gonna sleep for the next three months. So good luck with that. It's gonna be a wild adventure. Yeah. I have to give her a shout out because she is carrying like 12 pounds of baby in her body right now. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, no thanks. <laughs> I'm all set on that. <laughs> no. That's all, all right, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, thank up. you so much, man. We appreciate you uh, you joining mm-hmm. us. And uh, if you want to, you can check out Jared Diamond. Um, That's Jared with one R, by the way. Don't he, misspell it. Yeah, Jared, Jared with one R. And he's the Wall Street Journal journalist, not the geologist, which is what Ross thought. Yeah. The 86-year-old geologist. Now, you don't look 86 or like a geologist, frankly. To so. be fair, Jared, of those things. Jared Diamond is a great geologist name it would be yeah i mean you're named it's after a good a baseball writer name too oh Yo, yeah you're right god damn yeah Look, you could you could have you maybe you should be an amateur geologist then just to round it out <laughs> <laughs> maybe when maybe during my parental leave i'll get into geology yeah, there you go yeah <laughs> but just watch uh, a bunch of documentaries definitely follow this guy on social you could check yep. out his articles on uh, uh on the wall street journal i know it's typically paywalled but they can get some like previews and stuff right yeah the paywall the journal sort of like you never know if you're going to hit it or not. So you just have to kind of <laughs> click, and it's a wild adventure to find out if you'll be able to read the story or not. Bert, well, just click around on his articles till you get a freebie. And, <laughs> or, or subscribe to the Wall Street Journal. I yeah, do. Yeah. I love it. So Yeah, same. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, man. We appreciate you stopping by. Thanks, guys.